Hello, I'm Brad Young with the North Carolina Institute of Political Leadership. Uh, my guest today just finished his term as president of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, and he's here today to talk about his 100 Counties Prepared initiative. Uh, Frank Williams, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's always great to be with IOPL. So you just finished this uh, this term as president right. of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your time leading up to that and uh, and how you used your time in office, uh, that particularly that 100 county initiative. Well, and the way our system works is in way back in 2018, I was elected second vice president. So you move up second VP, first VP, president elect, and then president. So that gives whoever's in that role has had three years to prepare. When I first got elected second vice president, the my ultimate presidential initiative was not even on my radar as far as what, what I would want to focus on. Exactly 20 days after I was elected and sworn in, Hurricane Florence made landfall just a few miles east of where I currently stand and did just did a number on Brunswick County and surrounding counties. And when Florence left, I knew what my initiative had to be, to be because I had observed that there was just a complete lack of training on emergency preparedness for elected officials. There was plenty for our staff, plenty for our law enforcement, but little to no training that's suitable for elected officials and tells us what our job is and what our job is not when there's an emergency. And every elected official I know is going to want to going to feel like they've got to do something when there's an emergency. They're not going to be the, that one person that's missing in action. And the problem with that is if they don't want to know what to do, they're probably still going to do something. So we created this initiative, 100 Counties Prepared, to help fill that void and create a training program to educate county commissioners and other elected officials on what an emergency is and what our job is in an emergency. So in that one day uh, of day of training that you uh, that you hosted, uh, what were some of the highlights that really uh, that that helped some other uh, county representatives uh, get up to speed on on some of these emergency management or emergency prepar uh, preparedness um, uh, subjects? We covered a lot of different topics, and the first thing I want to say is I'm very proud that 61 county officials from throughout North Carolina graduated from this. And it's not 61 counties because some counties did have multiple graduates, but we did have 61 people complete the class. Um, we started out the day with just an overview of the phases of an emergency, all the North Carolina laws that apply in an emergency, the terms, all the things you need to know, and who has what power under, under law. And that was, I think, about a three-day class crammed into one hour most of the people came out of it like, what in the heck did I just hear? Because it covered so much and it helped the elected officials, all of whom are part-time in, in county roles, understand just how important this process is and just how complex it is. After that, we had a, um, a session moderated by two current county commissioners who were professional emergency managers in North Carolina in their professional life before they retired. And that was really insightful to hear the two of them talk about how it looks from both sides of that table. And, and they discussed what a commissioner's role is and what a commissioner's role is not. And they have a unique advantage in that they've been on the other side and seen um, commissioners do a lot of things that help, but also get in the way. The real message that came out of that was during the event, stay in your lane. Don't try to be the emergency manager if you're not the emergency manager and don't get in their way. Uh, after lunch, we shifted and talked about crisis communication and had uh, outstanding crisis communication professional from the Washington area who just moved to Wilmington, followed by Brunswick County's communication director who shared some insights from being on the ground. And then we rounded it out with a panel discussion that had two emergency management rock stars, which are Brock Long, who was the FEMA director, and Mike Sprayberry, who is North Carolina's retired emergency management director. And at the end of the day, all 61 graduates got a, a certificate of completion signed by myself as NCACC president, but more importantly, by the North Carolina Director of Emergency Management. And, and that department is fully on board with this program. And I think we're gonna have a ongoing working relationship with them to make sure this is not the only time this training happens. Well, focusing on a little bit on the communication side of things that you mentioned, right. what are some of the lessons that you learned being a county commissioner in Brunswick County during a hurricane that, uh, that you think would benefit uh, county commissioners all over the state? I think the first and foremost is make sure that you know information is accurate before you put it out. Um, there was a situation where an elected official in another jurisdiction on TV 
kind of went off the cuff and said, okay, this particular highway is now open. You can come home. The problem is that the river that crosses that highway was still rising and people tried to come home. And when they got there, it was flooded. So verify information before you put it out, have a protocol in place. The one we ultimately decided in Florence was if it came from my county manager, it's probably situational awareness. If it came from our public information officer, then it was vetted for public distribution. So we made sure that we had a protocol on what we disseminated. Um, the second thing I think is very important is that if we don't put out accurate information, people will put out inaccurate information. And it's much easier to take the lead in putting out what people need to know and giving them facts than it is to have to go on Facebook or next door and correct a rumor that the power's not coming back on for six weeks or that the gas line busted when it didn't bust or whatever that rumor might be. So to me, those were two of the biggest. And the third one is to you just don't let you know, don't let your emotions get the best of you. If you're an elected official, you've got to be the voice of calm and the voice of hope and the voice of reason when everything is going crazy. And if the commissioner goes crazy, what do you think everybody else is going to do? Uh -huh. and, and you mentioned uh, two of the guests that you had, uh, Mike Sprayberry and Brock Long, who are both well respected nationally as far as their uh, in, in this particular field and their work in it. Um, you know, particularly uh, Brock Long, who's being a FEMA director at a national level, right. what kind of experience did he bring to this training and, and contribute to, uh, to, to the attendees? One thing I think from that Brock Long brought is a perspective on what FEMA's job is and is not. And I think a lot of local officials think that FEMA is going to come in and, and, and do everything for them. And the way it's broken down, and I'm going to try to recite this accurately, is that emergencies are locally executed, state managed, and federally funded. FEMA's job is to provide funding after the fact. They may have some on the ground resources, but it is really a state and local operation. And with 100 counties, the county is the statutory lead, so the county needs to have its act together before the storm even forms. So that was one thing. Um, another thing, just to put it into perspective, obviously Hurricane Florence is our storm of record in Brunswick County. It was a defi defining moment of my time as an elected official to date. But for Brock Long, it was one of about 200 emergencies he dealt with in the course of his time as FEMA director. And to him, it's not even on the scale of the big ones. He had Hurricane Michael and some others. So that just shows that while this was our entire world here, it's one of 200 emergencies he dealt with over the course of several years. And we have to keep that in mind and have the perspective that we have to be in, be in charge in our own community and take, take things seriously and have a plan. Well, Frank, thank you so much for joining us. Before Absolutely. We one final question. Uh, you know, you're someone that, uh, in particular, around your experience uh, with hurricanes, uh, you led a class for us during the pandemic about leadership in a crisis and uh, uh, along the same lines of, you know, the, the quality of information and how you disseminate that information uh, to your constituents. Uh, is there any other lessons that would apply within crisis or beyond that on leadership that you really emphasized through the course of developing this training and delivering it? I think one big one is you know, the importance of relationships. And I don't remember exactly who said it, but in one of our meetings that our task force had, and I do want to point out, we had a task force that helped develop this training that covered counties from Hyde County all the way to Cherokee. But one of the speakers said, it's too late to pass business cards when the creek's already rising. Build your relationships before you need them. And, and there's a list of those relationships, I believe on the NCACC website, but you need to know who your FEMA people are. You need to make sure, I think that the elected official's job, I'll close with this, it's not the county commissioner's job to write the emergency operation plan, but it is our job as a board of county commissioners to make sure that our staff has one that's up to date and current and that it covers what it needs to cover and was written by someone who knows how to write an emergency operations plan. It's not our job as a county commissioner to run the emergency, but it is our job to make sure that our, our staff has the resources they need to do it and that we have the right staff to run it. And where we can help is in the leadership of making sure those plans are in place in the preparation phase, and then being a voice to the public, working with our staff to be that voice in the re recovery stage after the fact. During response, if we do anything, we need to make sure we're helping and not getting in the way. So I I'll close with that. Well, Frank, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Congratulations on your, your term as president. Uh, and I'm so thankful to have to know that this training is going on for leaders across our state, but uh, particularly during hurricane season, I hope they don't have to use it.
I hope we don't have to use it for a couple of years, but that's why it needs to happen every year because next year you may have a new person in that job. Thank you and thank you for what IOPL does.